Coming up on our first episode, phone companies making TVs, the return of a cult classic TV show, and a fast food chain Thanos snaps its menu? It's time to smash up your Neo Geo as we enter the Cash Chat. Welcome to the Cash Chat, episode 1, recorded live on Tuesday, September 3rd, 2019. This is a variety podcast where I chat about what's new, what's hot, and what happened in the past week. So, welcome to this beautiful new podcast. I have no idea what in the hell I'm going to do with this, honestly. But, I do have a few things in mind. So, just a heads up, this is essentially what I'm going to call the prototype season, so... I, you know, this all just going to be experimental stuff. I don't know exactly how it's going to turn out. But, hey, here we go. So, before we get started, I just want to say, like, what the podcast will be like. So, there will be multiple segments, and they'll be divided by topic. So, and I'll explain what in a few seconds. Each segment will have around three stories that we're going to talk about, and they be anything like, News, discussion, reviews, like, just three things. Uh, not every episode will have every segment, so... In case in point, this one actually lacks one of them that I came up with. Uh, the length, I actually don't know yet. It could be 30 minutes, could be an hour, could be longer, could be shorter, who knows. And I'll try to do a normal game stream afterwards most times for people who are watching live right now. And yeah, that's actually one thing, is I am recording this live, so if you want to watch it early before it goes up, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash brandingeasing, or Mixer, or YouTube, or whatever. Oh, and also, I'm not sure of the schedule yet, so it could be weekly, it could be monthly, it could be bi-weekly, and I probably won't do it on a set day, so even if it is weekly, it could be Tuesday one day, Wednesday the next... Saturday, one day, I don't freaking know. And the recording times won't be set out. Just essentially, if I'm streaming that week on a specific day, I'll do it. And I have time. So as for what actual segments we got, we have uh, Tech Talk, which is what's actually going to be coming up first. And that's basically just what you would expect. I'm talking about tech news. Be- where it'd be like PC stuff, phones, TVs, etc. Uh, the Munch is going to be food-related stuff, so food news, recipes, all that kind of stuff. Game On is definitely going to be more than just gaming. That's just... I figured that would be a good name, because that actually is a callback to another podcast that used to exist and no longer does. So I thought, you know, kind of be an interesting callback. But it's about gaming and pop culture, so that includes TV, anime, movies, and the like. Uh, the Prime, that will be like, that's actually a revival of an old thing I used to do on my channel. Which, um, was basically like the five stories of the week or something like that. It was basically my first try to podcast, and I literally never got past the first episode, so hopefully this one doesn't suffer the same fate. But, you know, I figured I could bring that back as a segment of a larger show. Because, I mean, it's like, that could be a quick rundown of stories. It could be just five random, like, things, like a top five list. Who knows? And then lastly will be a creator spotlight, which I'll essentially just use as a place to shout out some people I love. So. So, yeah. That should be it for the explanation. Let's just jump right into it. And, no, I'm not Keemstar. I'm not going to say it in that way. Because y'all know that's what people want to hear. But yeah, so time for some tech talk. And normally I would put like some intro here. I just obviously don't have it at the moment. So let's get up with the first story of the day. Android version number 10 released today. So what's new in Android 10? It now has a dark mode, which is kind of awesome, because seeing things, like, phones are, like, always have, like, really bright screens, and trying to use your phone at night is just bad. And, oh, hey, you can actually turn on the dark theme for the entire website, that's kind of cool. 
But yeah, so they have a dark theme now, which you can see here. Or you can stick with the traditional light theme like always. Dark theme would be nice if you have a phone with an OLED screen because OLED doesn't use battery power when the screen's fully dark. There's also now a brand re redesign, so you can see the new Android logo up there. It's like they now incorporate the bug droid in, there's all these, you know, new color schemes and stuff they're using, so brand redesign, you know, it's like kind of nice that they're doing that for the 10th release, it's like a big thing. Uh, we have live caption, which is kind of cool, it's basically can automatically capture media kind of like YouTube does for the real world in real time, which is pretty badass. Granted, you know, if YouTube's translations are anything to go by... It probably won't be that accurate, but, you know, it's like, it's better than none, obviously, for people who can't hear easily. We now have Smart Apply, which, which allows you to take action, you know, to messages in, in the notifications now. A few apps had this before inside the app, like Gmail has a, a kind of thing like this, where you can fill out a few quick replies to a message. Um, Allo, I think, had it before that got shut down, but now it's just every single app, essentially, can do that. This one is actually pretty cool, a sound amplifier. So, you can actually have the phone boost sound and filter background noise. So, it could be a, it's an interesting idea, because, like, when you're listening to podcasts like this one, usually you have headphones in. And you might not be able to heal the world, world around you. So having the ability to like selectively filter in some people might actually be a nice idea. And I know some uh, headphones actually have that natively. But like to have it built into the phone. Actually a pretty cool idea. Gesture navigation is finally complete. So this is one thing that they actually... I saw an interview about with the Android people. And it was basically... They wanted to introduce it in the last version, Android Pie, but they actually couldn't have enough time to finish it, so. It's like, yeah, it actually doesn't, you know, they didn't really get the proper thing out. Everybody hated the Pie controls, like, they were terrible, according to, like, most people. Granted, I was fine with them, but it was kind of dumb how they were implemented, I do agree with that. Because it was just a bar on top of the normal navigation bar. Which means you didn't really save any space. Which is kind of one of the big benefits of Gesture Nav. And there was still a physical back button. But like overall the actual gestures were fine. You swipe up to go home. You swipe up and hold to open the recents. And then, like, you can long press to open up the Google Assistant. And this is basically, oh yeah, and then you can swipe back and forth to switch between apps. And this is basically the same thing, just now it's a little tiny bar down there that actually overlays the app. So it's no longer a separate bar. And going back is now a sl swipe in from the left side of the screen. Which, I wonder how that will work with uh, some navigation stuff. Because a lot of apps have side drawers, which if you don't use the Android and use iOS, it might be a bit of a foreign concept, but basically you can pull in from the left side to open a menu on the side of the screen that has a bunch of like links to apps. It's basically the equivalent to the tab bar you see at the bottom of most iOS apps. But you can fit more options there, obviously. So yeah, it's like that's going to be a bit of an interesting thing with to see how they do that. And then it's like, okay, yeah, foldables and 5G, it's only on Android, but I mean, it's not going to be long before Apple does something, I'm sure about that. There's more privacy controls now, so you can adjust privacy settings in one place. Now, you can opt out of ad targeting, you can now control location for apps so they'll only get it wide in use, before it's just all or nothing. It's like security updates are now sent directly from the store instead of requiring a system update for some cases. So, you know, finally people will be getting security updates way faster, which was a big, like, downside of Android. Is that 
Oh yeah, your phone is probably still stuck on like five versions ago. Even though Apple's phones, they're all on basically basically the latest release at the moment. So it's like... Yeah, you know, having the software updates delivered via the store, you know, for minor things that can be patched like that, like security fixes, is actually genius. And then now there's this focus mode, where you can essentially block apps from being able to be opened. Which, I mean, a lot of apps have done that in the past, but this is just a built-in solution. Uh, parental controls are now built in. And, of course, there's a bunch of new stuff here. Hearing aid support built in. Dynamic death camera photo format. Monochrome camera support. Individual timers for websites. New emojis, which has gender-inclusive designs. Everybody's freaking out about that on social media, which makes sense. Uh, you can share Wi-Fi via a QR code. That's actually handy. A uh, quick wallet access is now on the power menu, so, which, that's also pretty handy, because it's like, oh yeah, you're gonna pay for something with your phone, you gotta launch the app first. It's like, yeah, that takes a bit of time. So just be able to long press the power button and get access to them is actually pretty convenient. So, yeah, that's actually... Android 10 actually looks like it'd be a pretty good update, and it's rolling out today for Android, for most Android devices, so, well, Pixel-wise, it's rolling out for most of the Pixel devices. So yeah, make sure to keep an eye on that, you know, for when it eventually, maybe ever, hits your phone. Now on to story number two. Apple announced an event that's happening next week on September 10th, exactly one week from today, as of the recording of this podcast. And one thing I gotta know, like, right, right away is this uh, graphic that they use for the invitation, which actually, let me see if I can find, yeah, if I can find the bigger version. So... You can't tell me that doesn't look like the classic iMac colors that they use with the translucent plastic and all that. It makes me wonder, like, clearly they usually tease something in these invitation invites. So, classic iMac colors on an event for, you know, probably the iPhone. You have to wonder, like, maybe those are the colors, maybe there's going to be something else related. You know, more of a throwback kind of thing. It's interesting to think about what's going to happen with that, because why else? Like, why else would they, you know, use the classic, like, translucent colors and stuff, when that's definitely not what the stuff they usually use. But anyway, uh, back to the actual event stuff. So, what's rumored to be announced? We have new iPhones. That's obviously going to happen. Like, they always announce the new iPhones around this time. So... For them to announce it is basically a no-brainer. And they actually did already some more leaks. So we know most of the stuff about it. It's like the design with this weird-ass three-camera setup thing. Uh, this, you know, same basic iPhone 10 design. Otherwise, it's been mostly seen. So it's like overall, it seems, and it looks like there will still be three iPhones just like last year. So there's going to be the cheaper R option. With the LCD screen, not OLED, which is interesting because Google themselves made their cheap three hundred dollar phone with an OLED screen. It's like so, Apple kind of cheapen cheapening out on their OLEDs for the budget phone that still costs like six hundred bucks is kind of shitty. But I mean, oh well, it's not a bad screen though. I mean, LCD is still fine. It's just kind of bizarre. Like, oh yeah, Google can do this for three hundred dollars, while Apple can't even do it for six hundred. It's only on their thousand dollar phones. But yeah, getting a bit sidetracked. 
So that's the 11 R, which they're going to be doing like normal. There's going to be the 11 S, whatever. Well, like usual, well not S, but the main 11. And then the Max Pro, whatever option. Nobody knows if it's going to be called the Pro or the Max, but considering last year was the Max, like, who knows. Apple Watch, it sounds like it's going to be the same series model that they're currently using. But it's just going to be ceramic and titanium editions, like they had with the original. So it's like, that'll be interesting to see. This one actually sounds super interesting to me. So, a redesigned high-end MacBook Pro with a 16-inch display. So it's like, will we get, you know, a proper keyboard on them now? Because one of the biggest complaints the past years have been, the butterfly keyboards suck. Like, they get dust in them and they break. Super easily. So if they can manage to redesign the, uh, the MacBook with the new keyboard, that means it'll probably become to the rest of the models too, and people will love that. Also, 16-inch, I'm pretty sure it's one of the like bigger sizes they've ever released of a MacBook Pro. So it'll be interesting to see what they could do. And also, a good thing to note, whatever that they actually do say here in the article, they held two fall events in past years. So would this be shown at the current September event, or would this be shown at the next event? If they do have a next event. Same thing with iPad. So they could possibly be introducing a, a new entry level 10.2 inch iPad. They could be doing different cameras and stuff. Who knows. If they'll do any iPad announcements. But if they do they might be at the separate event. Because they're usually not the same event. And then the last thing they have is of course the services. And... It'll be really interesting to see what they're going to do with Apple TV Plus cause, and Apple Arcade, because all we know is the launching in the fall. We don't know any of our info, basically. So, well, and we do know some shows for Apple TV Plus. So, obviously, it's going to be the fall when these new iPhones are going to launch. So, they're probably going to launch alongside it. So, we gonna, we have to see more info. So, yeah, I'll be actually reacting to that live next week on my stream, so be sure to tune in to check that out. And now, we go on to something completely different. Two somewhat phone-related announcements to a TV. So this one just kind of shocked me, honestly. Because OnePlus, if you don't know, is a maker of phones. They usually do, like, more budget phones that, you know, are actually, like, really good for the price. So, like, really good bang for the buck. So, you could basically spend $1,000 buying the latest Samsung Galaxy S or Note. Or you could pay 600 and get a OnePlus that's basically just as good. Minus, like, maybe a couple features. Like, one thing they usually don't do is they don't pay for the uh, water resistance rating. They still have the stuff in there, basically. But they don't actually pay to get the rating. You know, because that basically just adds up extra costs by paying for the license. So, them launching a TV sounds interesting. This is actually on Amazon India's website, and they apparently leaked it early. And it seems like they just added a notify me button because they're like, well, it's already out there. Might as well just keep going. And we don't really see that much on this page, but, like, it does look interesting what it has. So, 55-inch QLED, which, in case you don't know, QLED is not OLED. OLED is basically organic LEDs, and they do deteriorate over time, which does lead to screen burning, usually. This is what is called QLED, which is quantum LED. It's what Samsung actually uses on a lot of their panels. So this could actually just be a rebranded Samsung panel, who knows. And basically, QLED it stands for uh, like quantum dot, and what it means is bas it's like a different LED technology 
that's closer to OLED in design with how it looks in the there are the blacks and a lot, but it also doesn't have the burning issue as bad and usually is a bit cheaper to make. And interestingly, it says it's going to have Dolby Vision, so that's HDR, so that's good. But this is the part that's like really interesting. Eight speakers at 50 watts for punchy bass with Dolby Atmos. You never see that in a TV at all. Like, most TVs are, like, two speakers at 20 watts. So, 50 watts for a TV speaker is insane, and to have eight of them for a full Atmos setup is just like, wow. It's like, that's actually insane for a TV. And the thing is, knowing they always like to undercut everybody price-wise, like, I'm wondering how cheap this TV is going to be. Because, granted, it's not going to be, like, the cheapest of cheap, like, because, like, I don't, I'm not expecting, like, 300-ish at all around that area. Because TVs are more expensive, obviously, than phones. And it's a 55-inch, which is, you know, obviously way bigger than most TVs around that price range, which are, like, 32. So, yeah, I'm, like, curious to see what they're going to do with the Atmos thing, especially. But, that's not all. I actually have a second link for this one, because there's actually more info that leaked out. It's going to be using Android TV. Because, I mean, of course it is. Because, I mean, like, seriously, all their friends use Android. Of course they're going to use the off-the-shelf Android TV experience to power the damn thing. But what's really interesting is you can actually see here what looks to be like an actual like promo picture. And the design looks interesting to say the least. It looks more almost like a modder in my opinion with the stand thing there. And the logo right underneath the small bezel. But I think what's really going to be interesting about it is actually what they... One thing they did actually make public is that it's going to have a phone integration. Which does have me wonder, because most Android TVs don't really have phone integration. It's basically just, oh, you can pull up the remote control app on your phone, and you can use that to like type into the any app that needs typing. And you can obviously navigate around the interface with the remote control. But that's basically it, and it's basically just a replacement for the built-in remote that comes with the device. So, by phone integration... And it sounds like they are building something that doesn't actually exist in current Android TV. Could that be, like, maybe it mirrors your phone notifications? Could that be it mirrors your phone screen itself? Uh, like, who knows? What Like, could you get phone calls on the TV? Does it, And it actually does bring up an interesting question. It's obviously got a microphone, at least, in the remote for the Android TV part. But does it have an always-on microphone? Because then it could act as a Google Assistant Smart Hub-like device, which would be really interesting to see. So yeah, that's it for the Tech Talk. The first segment of the stream is done. But anyway, you know what else? Well, God, I kind of butchered that already. <laughs> So, the next segment we're actually going to do is called The Munch. And it's the food segment, so... You know what sounds good right about now? How about a sub sandwich? And by sub, I don't mean, a, you know, an actual sub sandwich. I mean, like, a Twitch sub. So, this is actually somewhat Tech Talk still. But I figured I'd include it under here because... Subway. Sub. You know, it works. But yeah, so this month, starting today, you can sub to any streamer on Twitch and get f for 50% off, which is awesome. Granted, you know, obviously I can't get any of that because I'm not affiliated, but, you know, you can go support some other people, including the Creator Spotlight that we actually will have at the end. But in addition, there's also going to be bonus bits, so Subway is actually going to give temp add 10% to any bits donated that's over 10 uh, there's going to be a sub sandwich chair emote because, of course, Subway is going to have a Subway emote. And then they'll be gifting subs in random streams. 
and even streaming themselves. So yeah, I figured I'd just throw that one in. Because like I said, it's not really food related, but I mean, Subway's sponsoring it. I mean, it's somewhat food news because it involves a restaurant. And I mean, it's a good segue from tech to food. But yeah, that one was just a quick thing that we're going to drop in. Now let's get to the bulk of the food news. And this one is one that I am like, uh, about. It's such a doozy. So, Taco Bell is no longer going to serve, like, half of their menu. This honestly pisses me off so much because, and you'll see why in a second. So, what have they discontinued? Well, first off, a few months ago they actually did some things already. So, you can actually, um, well, the few things they did already was the Gordita Supreme, the Caramapo and Panda, and the Mexamil. Two of those items are stuff they can still make. Because they still sell the Cheesy Gordita Crunch, which uses the only other item that uses the Gordita, and the rest of the items on there are basically the same as on every other item, like every standard soft taco. So, it kind of makes no sense to discontinue. The Mexi Melt, on the other hand, actually is kind of a dumb item, to be honest, because it's kind of expensive for what it is. It's like a really tiny thing that just has, like, pico and cheese in it. But they do still sell all the ingredients, and you can literally just buy a cheese roll up and tell them to throw pico in it. It would basically equal the same thing. So, I mean, that one I'm kind of not as upset about them getting rid of, because, I mean, it was so expensive for what it is anyway. But, you know, it's better that, you know, it's just odd that they're getting rid of items that don't actually need getting rid of, you know? Like, they're not really doing it, saving anything by getting rid of those items. It's just basically like, well, you know, we no longer want to sell these, but, so like, yeah. Anyway, uh, back to what we were doing. So, um, yeah. So now what they're actually removing is a l lot more. And it's like, really? You're removing that many items? So first off, we got the beefy mini quesadilla. Which is dumb because they still carry the chicken mini quesadilla and they both use the same shell and they also have the similar topping. So, I mean... Again, kind of dumb for them to remove that, because, like, it's just like, okay, well, you know, you just removed an item that you can still make, again. Chips and salsa. It's literally just chips and a cup of salsa. Like, if you think they're going to get rid of those, it's like, really? Like, no, they're not going to get rid of chips from their stores, and they're definitely not going to get rid of salsa, because those are items that use salsa. Uh, Chipotle Chicken Loaded Griller. I mean, you know, the low grillers actually haven't been receiving that much attention over here recently, so it does make sense. But again, it's still being made, and they still sell other loaded grillers, so why specifically that one? Uh, Double Decker Taco. This one kind of hurts just because it's one of the longest running items I've had before, back from before they even started doing experimentation stuff. So in case you don't know, back in the 80s, 90s, Taco Bell was a more like authentic kind of Mexican style fast food place. But in the 2000s, they basically branched out and was like, yeah, let's just make all this crazy shit like, um, you know, Crunchwrap Supremes, Dorito Tacos, Quesadillas, I mean, Quesadillas. Not quesadillas. Um, quesaritos. Quesalupas. It's like all that kind of stuff. So it's like, yeah, back then they didn't do any of that stuff. But the Double Decker is like one of the very first like experimental items they did. And I mean, it's simple. It's literally just a hard shell taco with beans and a soft shell surrounding it with beans in between. They could easily still make that. Like, there's no reason to get rid of that. Or, you know... These two, of course, now, this is where it becomes a bit of, like, yeah, you can't really make that anymore. So, the Cool Ranch and the Fiery Doritos Tacos. Those, I can understand, because, like I said, you know, one of the main reasons you would want to clean up your menu is because, like, oh, yeah, we don't want to keep this item in stock anymore if it's not being used that much, you know? 
looks like it actually does kind of somewhat make sense to do that, you know? But yeah, it is still just kind of somewhat dumb. That's like, okay, well, you know. They're getting rid of it because they still sell the normal Doritos taco, but at least with that one, it is like, okay, yeah, it is at least somewhat understandable because they no longer sell the, you know, thing, so. It's like they don't want to keep it in stock. That's understandable. It may not be as high selling, you know. But it's like, yeah, it's still kind of a still normal one, but oh well, you know. Double Tostada. This one I literally have never seen anywhere at any Taco Bell I've ever been to. So it's like, I actually want to look up real quick a picture of it, because like... As like I said, I've never actually seen a Double Tostada at any place. I've seen the spicy Tostada, but never a double one. So it's like, is it the same thing without spice, or like... Or is it really just like a double layer tostada or something? Like, I don't know if they fucked that up, because like I said, I've never seen one at any place, or even on their website or anything, so... And I can't seem to find much online about it, too, other than other people just saying double tostada, which it's like, but no pictures or anything. So that one's a bit bizarre to me, but... It could mean the spicy tostada, so let's just assume it's that. It's a dollar menu item. It's basically just a tostada with taco toppings on top. Honestly, I don't see that one being that big of a deal if they remove. Again, it's something they all still have all the shit to make because tostadas are literally what's inside of a crunch wrap. But I mean, it's also like, it's a very simple item. It's not like that big of a deal if they remove it because you could literally just, you could probably just ask them to have a tostada or you could like, just crack open a hard shell. And you basically have the same thing. A hard shell taco and you have the same thing, so. The power menu burrito, they're still keeping the bowl around. And that does have some specialty ingredients like romaine lettuce. So it's like, okay, yeah, it's a bit weird to keep around. And then the XXL grilled stuff burrito is basically just the five layer burrito. But like guacamole and stuff at which again, they all still have. So overall, the new menu items are just like, meh. It's like there's almost no reason to get rid of like half of these, but it's like, you know what? They want to simplify their menu. I guess it's fine. I just think the reason is kind of dumb because it's like you got all the stuff to still make every item then. So all you're basically doing is just making it more expensive. Because, like, oh, yeah, you want a mech spelt now, you know, even though that was our expensive item to begin with. But it's like, now you gotta buy a cheese roll up. You have to ask them to add Pico, which is like an extra, like, 30 or 40 cents. So, like, it does add up. I mean, maybe that's a bad example, because I'm pretty sure the cheese roll up is only, like, a dollar. So, it might actually still be cheaper than the mech spelt actually was. But keep in mind, I'm pretty sure the cheese roll up is also smaller. So, it's like, okay, yeah. It's like the only real losses there are the caramel apple and panda, which, yeah, that one definitely sucks because that was honestly one of my favorite desserts there. I mean, the Cinnabons are nice, you know, also. And the cinnamon twists are kind of like the med dessert. I mean, they're cheap, so they're good enough for that. But they're not like, if you're like actively wanting a good dessert, you would actually buy the other two. So it's like the loss of it does kind of suck, but I mean, it's understandable. That's a pre-made item. They probably get shipped to them frozen. So if the supplier no longer wants to make them, probably, you know. And then it's like both Doritos tacos. Which again, that one does suck, but I mean, it's only two different flavors. And they're the most, you know, like the flavors that most people don't want anyway. It's like you still get the good old nacho cheese Dorito. Like I'm going to miss Safari because that was one. I love spicy stuff, but it's not a big deal. And now, moving on to the next item. The Return of Good Eats. Yeah. 
And god, that's a giant fucking ad. It's like, fix your website. Well, it's like, I am so glad this show is back, because in case you don't know, this was like a classic show from the late 90s, early 2000s, that aired on Food Network, which basically... Um, what's the word? It's like, it was a good mix between comedy, science, they had some puppets in there, which is hilarious, and cooking. It's like, it's like such a genius show with how it does stuff. And hey, it's finally back, after years. And the episodes actually, I watched some of the new episodes already, and it's amazing. It's like, feels basically like the exact same show, just everybody's older. Which is understandable. So I'm not going to go too long on about this. But yeah, I just want to say. If you have cable. Or you have some other way to watch it. The first episode is actually free on YouTube. You can see here. Just watch it. Like, you might not think you're that shit in a cooking show. But like, it's amazing. And you'll just love it. I kind of just want to say, hey, it's back. Go watch it. So yeah. There we go with the munch. And now, it's time to game on. And this is going to be interesting. So, Nintendo announced there's a Direct tomorrow. And they only mentioned Sword and Shield and Luigi's Mansion, so that's obviously going to be talked about there. But what else? Like, think. let's just think a moment. Like, what else could they possibly show? So... One rumor is they're going to talk about a possible new Mario, which I don't know, it might be too soon for that. But, like, they have been teasing quite a bit, especially at Gamescom. They had a freaking fruit on every single table for some reason. They swapped out during every interview. And then they also, around the same time, posted a picture of Mario eating a piece of fruit and reference Odyssey and Sunshine in the tweet. So... A lot of people went a bit wild with that. Who knows if, you know, it actually does end up resulting with anything. But it could make sense that they could possibly release an Odyssey DLC that's like Isle Dolphino from Sunshine as a place you can go. Or it could be an actual, like, Sunshine 2 after all these years or something. Who knows? It's like, it could be a tease. It could be a wild stretch by people. Who knows? Uh, Breath of the Wild 2. Of course, you know, they already announced that. Will they show more info, or will it be safe for a later date? That's a big if, you know. Uh, as for, like, indie towels, will they finally announce the Celeste DLC date? Maybe they might announce it there. It might make sense. Uh, had in time, they could possibly just show up off, you know, the release date in the montage there, but I don't think it will get any more than that, because they already released a trailer on their YouTube and stuff, so... But they could just, like, offhand mention it, like, oh yeah, in the montage of here's what's coming to the Switch. But now let's get into the big bulk of the stuff, and starting with... Overwatch. So this one sounds really interesting. So this actually leaked the other day from an early Amazon listing, and it actually mentioned officially licensed by Nintendo and Blizzard Entertainment. Of course, you know, it's going to be licensed by Blizzard, you know, if it's their brand, because if it wasn't, that would be a bit of an issue. But it's like, yeah, officially licensed by Nintendo and Blizzard. It's a case for the Switch, and Overwatch does not exist on the Switch. Like, why would Blizzard make a case for their game if their game is not even on the platform? You know, it'd make more sense for them to make, like, a Diablo accessory, since there is Diablo on Switch. So it does lead me to believe that, yeah... We might see Overwatch, and now might actually be a really perfect time to announce it out of that, or they're going to announce it at their own conference, BlizzCon, like, next month, I think. But, so, yeah, it's like, that one seems to be, like, a pretty good, you know, like, this will probably happen, and I'm guessing it'll probably be, like, the Shadow Drop. Which, in case you don't know the terms, basically means sudden release that day that they announced at the event. So, it'll probably be like, oh, yeah, Overwatch now on Switch, download it now. Moving on to the next part of the Nintendo Direct stuff. Um. Okay, I don't know why there was a redirect notice there, but um. 
Yeah. So, S and K. Now this one's interesting because like we don't know anything really about it, you know. But all we know, and it could just been like a simple error. But you do see here Nintendo UK's website actually put up a page for the challenger pack and actually said copyright SNK Corporation at the bottom. Which is kind of peculiar because there's no SNK character in Smash, obviously. And if you look at the past history of our DLC pages, they also only list the copyright of the care of the companies who are in there. For instance, the last one was a uh, Final Fantasy, well, not Final Fantasy, um, Dragon Quest character. So it's like it's listed Square Enix, and it didn't list Nintendo, didn't list you know all the air companies, whatever. So it's like, hmm, SNK being listed. So it's like, could there, it be an SNK character? And time that would have a previous leak, which was an anonymous 4chan, so who knows if it's actually legit or not. It basically said three things. The character will be somebody unexpected. It'll piss off a lot of people. And it'll be female. And SNK does kind of qualify for the first two, definitely. Because it's not something you would see coming, most likely. And it is, you know, probably going to disappoint some people because they probably want other characters, like always. But it's like, female character, they do actually have some. So it's like, hmm. It's like, you don't have to wonder what that's going to be. But also, like I said, it could be a mistake because they actually show another game, which there's a DLC for another game that SNK makes that has the same exact trademark and file size. But the previous Smash Pack is also the same file size, so you can't really go by the file size thing. Obviously, the trademark is exactly what we think might be the leak, so it's like, who knows? There you go. So yeah, an SNES, SNES controller was found a few months back, whatever. And you can see it on the FCC website here. So it's like, hmm, obviously why would they be making an SNES controller for a Switch unless SNES games were finally coming to the Switch? And considering it's almost a year to the date that they launched Switch Online, that would make perfect sense for them to be like, okay, yeah, first year we did NES, next year we did SNES, the year after we do N64, and so on. Or Game Boy or something like that. So it's like, yeah, it's pretty much a surefire thing. Like, yeah, SNES games are coming. It just will be at this direct. And I honestly, likely, I think it will. So it's like, as for what else there possibly could be in the direct, I honestly have zero idea. Or like, what even starting lineup of games could be for the SNES. It's like, it could be Super Mario World, obviously. You know, A Link to the Past, that's obviously going to be there. But as for, like, what else, it's like, hmm, I don't really know. But yeah, so let's actually move on from the Switch discussion. And into a sad story. So in case you didn't hear, or the, let's see, a few days ago, co-creator of Nine in the Woods, which is honestly a terrific game, you should go play, it's about depression, so it is a bit sad, but, you know... It's like, it has an amazing story. They died. And in case you do, I don't want to go too in-depth into the full background because it is a bit, you know, something I would not like to talk about too much on this kind of channel. But, um, it's like, yeah, they got us accused of assaulting somebody by somebody who, you know, doesn't, has lied in the past about stuff like that, so... Who knows if it's true or not. I'm not going to judge anybody. I'm not going to say, oh, they're lying for sure about this time. That other person is not at fault at all. Like, no, it, they could be a fault. They could not still be lying. They could not be lying. Who knows? But it's still kind of sad to see them, you know, off themselves, essentially, because of it. So it's like, yeah, it's a terrible story. And you... And like this post says, like, if you're considering doing that kind of stuff, you really should be contacting support lines. It's like, don't end your life over this. 
And it's like, yeah, I just wanted to insert that because, like, it's such a sad story and it's kind of big, so you know, in the gaming industry. So, like, yeah, it's like I had to talk about it, but I don't want to linger on too long because, you know, I want to try to stay happy, you know, that stuff. So, yeah, time for the last thing before we end. And that is the creator spotlight. And it's going to be none other than... Okay, actually host in some way, but yeah. My boy Corminus. So, in case you don't know who he is... Basically, he is a variety streamer who talks about technology commonly. And... Part of the reason why I'm actually doing this podcast is I was actually inspired by him here recently because he actually just started his own where he's doing the same kind of thing. Where at the start of a stream, he's starting off with recapping so many stories. And then that's gonna... Uh, and then basically, just talking about him. It, his show is called uh, Let's Bite and it's all focused on PC tech mostly, although there is occasionally some gaming and mobile stuff there too. But it's more focused on the PC side tech thing. So you really should go check out it when you can. Versus my stuff here where it's basically... Okay, well I'm doing a variety thing of multiple topics of... Gaming, tech, food, whatever. But yeah, it's like they do a bunch of things. They play PC building simulator because tech focus... Uh, they do had time speed runs and a bunch of other stuff. And actually, before we go, let's actually watch one of their clips here real quick. Just so you can get a feel of how they're like. Let's go with, uh... This one. Uh. Uh. Oh, there you are. Hi. Uh. 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 Oh, there you are. Hi. Uh. I think maybe. Where are you? E e excuse me. Hello? Uh, Shotgun Senorita. Uh, hello. Hello? <laughs> what the heck? I am the best! I win! <laughs> Okay, yeah, so the quality was a bit rough there for video watchers, but you get the kind of gist, because if in case you don't know, that's the final boss of a hand time, and like I said, he speedruns it. Sometimes the boss just likes to vanish. And that's the reaction. And of course, because the boss is like a whole bunch of colors, it's just all over the place. Pixelation. But yeah, I think they'll actually do it for the first ever episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Next week, we're going to be recapping the Nintendo Direct and the Apple event. We'll be talking about whatever news comes out around then. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next podcast. If you have feedback, make sure to send over to Twitter at, at Brandon Join the Discord, the link will be posted in chat for live viewers, or it'll be in the description for everyone else. And show notes will also be linked. Have a great week, and I'll see you guys in the next cast. Peace.